Earth, a stage for war. As cold fronts from the Canadian Arctic push south, temperatures drop and tensions rise. It's cold! For a hardened group of cold-blooded killers and Blue Scout, one spark is enough to throw the rivals of the subdivision into turmoil. For the first time, the frigid events that rattled the snowy outskirts of Garysville will finally be revealed. Using forensic analysis, set reconstruction, CGI models, reenactments, and complicated arithmetic outsourced to Casa's food court. Two teams, two houses, 18 mercenaries, 42 million snowballs. The world's 78th largest snowball fight revealed. Sponsored and funded by Manco. Garysville, Colorado, January 7th, 2017. The day is still within the Ape House subdivision. Mercenaries hired by Manco to compete over gravel pits await their deployment. Every week, we go on tour. The Blue Division of Manco competes over gravel stocks for the next month over red territories, and vice versa. Most of the time, it's exhibition. On occasion, it's broadcasted. And sometimes, it's for keeps. <laughs> It's all good sport, you know. What the founders wanted, and wanted to keep going. Even after death. And a resurrection. Then death. Even though the competitive matches are a money sink, yield little to no profit for us, and denies us insurance benefits from the state, it shows us the many spectacular ways men can kill each other. And it's entertaining. As the matches close out, both the red and blue teams pack up their gear and head home to their bases. Their bases, two large APE houses outside of the city of Garysville, one of the two satellite municipalities of GM Big City. Each residence able to comfortably house the 18 mercenaries. We were originally stationed at uh, Metalworks. Hydro was our base. Bad cyclones. Everyone kept getting lost. That dumb sucked ass. I miss the privacy. It was in the best interest for Manco to move us to a base that is within reach to much of our many event locations. It was cheaper. Living outside the Colorado Rockies has its downsides compared to living in the Badlands of New Mexico. Snow. There ain't that much snow in New Mexico. We looked at it. Oh, yes. The warm weather. During the winter months, we yearn for a game down south just to soak in the hot sun. Though there is the unfortunate possibility we will be assigned to a match with even less favorable temperatures. Snow! Something the Russians and Canadians invented to keep us Americans down for a quarter of the year. I do not fear it, I weaponize it! After a grueling tournament at Upward, the red team returns home with zero wins. Yeah, we didn't do that bad. I mean, if and only if you overlook the fact that we were getting creamed one match after another by the Blues. At least we had fun. 
be sucked. Standing victorious, the blue team celebrated in the front yard. All because some bloke locked us out! With the blue team locked out of their home, their spirits were high and erratic. As for the red team, uh, their fortune has not improved. Manco only allows us to keep one set of keys to the house. So we don't lock the door anymore! As the euphoria and melancholy reached a peak between both teams, of what came next, no one knows for certain. snowball, roughly six inches wide, struck the Red Soldier, an impact that set the motivations and will between both teams in stone for the rest of the month. A lot of blame gets thrown around, and I don't like to name names, but it was Scout. 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 Scoundrel. Scout. Scout. Who else? Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, time out. No, it wasn't me. I'm telling you. I did not throw the first snowball! <laughs> war has broken out between the two teams. The Cold War has gone frigid. It was chaos. Men, women, and children were being mowed down. Blood spilled into the street. I could still hear the wailing screams of the innocent. What? Oh yeah, that. They had a snowball fight. The first fight, let me tell you, went on for several hours. Like a brawl on Ghost Fort. <laughs> like spice. Snow is a valuable resource, but in this battle, there isn't a giant worm around to make more. The ongoing onslaught persisted into the evening, slowing traffic to a crawl. <sighs> Big waste of time. As the night crept in, Red and Blue Team knew they were unprepared for a sustained conflict without a proper battle plan. Exhausted, the two teams breached their doors and retreated to their bases to regroup. Flip 
settled in, and the first battle of the war took its first casualty. Over the course of the early morning, the red and blue mercenaries laid up their plans, each hoping to take the neighborhood by the end of the week. Some proposals were contrived, many spontaneous, and others questionable, as the men prepped for the war ahead. for several days. Relentless assault and bombardment from both parties never let up. One day it was armies of snow, others it was war with technology. These men were trained and emboldened for non-stop raids and stonewall defense. It's pretty much what they were designed for. On January 15th, there was a momentary truce. National Hat Day was observed by both teams, though it only lasted for a half hour. War plans littered the houses, many simple, many too complicated, and one involving a yellow snow cone, but most never made it past the drawing board. The teams knew that they won't be getting anywhere, at least not conventionally. They could have fought for weeks. We could have held out for longer. Mark. <laughs> we needed to change things up. War production, the backbone of any good offensive. Both the Reds and Blues needed to optimize their ballistics construction if they were to have a chance to emerge on top. Several designs were tested, many failed. There was no point in reinventing the wheel, so to speak. The snowball was just too good a weapon. As the ammunition piles up, the next task at hand became paramount. Efficient delivery systems. Yeah, throwing snowballs is one thing, but throwing them for 8 to 16 hours straight? I gotta save my good arm for... Bad. So we put pyro on it! We were gonna ask Demo, but he didn't know Jack Rabbit about weapon construction. Unable to get a leg up over their red rivals through production and arsenal, the blue team shifts to a more illegal tactic. What? You know, I think the blue team were doing some shady stuff. They were moving in a bunch of fluids. I think they were experimenting with hard water. Hard water commonly known as ICE, revolutionized the blue team's war effort, giving them the edge they need to lead the offensive. Snow? It's just water, pretending to be sad.
It was ingenious, really. Snowballs packed one hell of a punch if they were made from ice. <laughs> we were being overwhelmed! We were pissing ourselves out there! Give them hell, boys! With the newfound weaponry and advantage, the blue team makes a strategic push. The offensive was devastating. In desperation, the red team is pushed into fortress mode. from their icy onslaught, the blue team's advance had slowed. We overshot our logistics. We couldn't supply our boys at the front line fast enough. So we had an answer to this conundrum. It was an incredible sight. <laughs> Brilliant plan. It was just a snowball fight. Soldier. I, I know a Soldier 76. Snowball fight. Who, who are you guys? With their supply line reinforced, the red team plans to settle it. Sniper! He missed. With his pride destroyed, the Red Sniper is out of commission. How the bloody hell did I hit that poor powder baffle back then? If he was in my own chest, it's always been tight with my rifle, but I could have made him win. Feeling untouched and blinded by his overconfidence, the Blue Soldier directs his attack. Only for bad intel to somehow direct his advance to the neighbor's house. What? I was out of town when they did this. Luckily, they didn't trash my yacht. Attacking the wrong house is like, uh, it's, it's like invading the wrong country. Sometimes it happens. Why am I even here? Why am I getting paid for this? With valuable time lost, the blue team mobilizes their attack back to the correct house, praying the red team did not regroup or see any of that. Ah, there was snow. I don't remember shit. The blue team's excursion cost the mercs their momentum. The red team has suppressed the blue's advance. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> While the blue team was loitering in the wrong yard, the red team was busy with a secret weapon of their own in hopes to bring a swift end to this war. The blue team was using ice balls. I think it's a war crime in some doctrine. <laughs> it was. Anyway, we had a solution. The ultimate solution. What the red team's medic and engineer had in store to change the tide of war was tight-lipped secret. We had to step up our security. Keep an eye out for enemy spies, you know? What we had cooking could never get out. Every red merc was carded at every checkpoint. It got so bad that the red soldier had to check his own papers to see if he was a spy. Hey, yo, what the fuck? 
With the enemy at the gates, the red team was running out of time. It was grueling work, planning everything out. What we planned was inhuman. It's just a giant water balloon. After several minutes of research and development, the Red Team's ultimate weapon of winter warfare bears fruit. With the new weapon weaponized, the Red Team just now needs a delivery system. So I call in a favor. Uh, McDonnell Douglas, Boeing C-17, Globemaster 3, military transport. Four turbojet engines of pure American thunder, capable of airlifting thousands of tons of cargo over mountains and deserts. Just what we need for the bombing run. Damn shame I don't know anybody who has one. <laughs> the incredible size and weight of the water balloon described by Jane Doe can never fly from a plane at size, let alone hold itself together. <laughs> Then again, the physics of this world doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that was some good shit. We win. He's good. Well, word got out of what was happening, and the administrator was getting a bit angry at the accumulating expenditures of damages. I had no part in this. What the mercenaries do on their own time is their business, as long as they don't drain the company's accounts over damages. Well, I'd say it was money well spent. Hell, this documentary I dumped a whole bank account into will certainly be a hit down under. We wish we had snow down there. Before things somehow get even worse, we forced the two teams to sign a treaty. The Treaty of Wet Snow is signed, a white peace between the two disgruntled teams of mercenaries. It was fucking bullshit. We won that battle. I have never been robbed of a victory like that since the Badwater Tournament in 2015. It was like going to Burger Tank on a hot day and the ice cream machine's broken. Like every day. That was crazy, but hey, it wasn't the craziest thing that happened to us that year. Our crew are coming to an ice and are taking us. A hostile cable hookup. Building the pool. Bushman's channel. It was just a snowball fight. Coming up next, James May and Richard Ammon go squatting in Dracula's castle. Will they survive the night? Stay tuned and find out.
We would like to cordially thank the YouTube underlings who have successfully siphoned their profits from their bespoke pyramid scheme of choice. Thank you, minions. Your contribution will finance the machine that will beat our employees until morale and productivity improves. Badly Gaming, Bardic Productions. Japiska Art, Lazy Lays. No more words! Rye Sands, Rat Jazz. Spacoon. And Wayne.